I want your top five MVPs for this season in the NBA. Starting from five, going to one. BJ, I'm going to start with you. Um, I, well, listen, Jokic is, is one right now. So Jokic, I'm just going to start. Jokic is one. Okay. Um, I'm going to just, Luka Doncic is probably two for me right now. Shea is probably three. Four is Giannis and five is Tatum. Well, why is got. why is Luca ahead of Shea on on your MVP list? Why is Luca? Um, the way Luca has been playing, his body of work. You know, I I I I I include your body of work. This isn't like a you know, just a one year thing. Like, you know, you can have a shooting star, for instance, you can have a great year, you can have a great month, so forth and so on. Luke has been playing at this level for some time. Now, I think there's one thing right now, which is which is really holding Luca back from actually being the MVP. And I've been saying this for a couple of years with him, right? His usage rate is incredibly high, but he's been playing at an a, a, a MVP level for like the last, you know, I'm going to say about three or four years now. Now, one thing that has been kind of inconsistent with him is the, the play of the team. Okay. As far as his team being at the, you know, in the top, let's say top four of his conference. If he's in the top four of his conference, I think Luca probably is right there. I mean, his, his numbers are as good as anyone's what he's been able to do. So, and the reason I have him ahead of Shea um, right now is because, you know, Shea just kind of, you know, he, like I thought he had a good year last year, Shea. I mean, he was first team all NBA, deservingly. But this year he took his team to another level. Okay. And I think that says something. However, I want to see him do that now to say, well, this is who he is as far as his, his ability to play at this consistent level. So, I think Shea has had an amazing year. I think he should be in there and get some first place votes. I mean, he's the jump he's made. However, for me, I like to take in the totality of what Somani is doing. And when I look at and when I look at Luca right now, that's why I have Luca right now too. If you were asking me today um, where they're at, but I mean, they could easily be switched around. And as I have a big I have a big premium on winning, mm -hmm. right? A big premium, but I want to also acknowledge that he's been doing this. I mean, Luca has been doing this now for quite some time, and if Luca can, if Luca was in the same spot right now as Shea Alexander, I think the the narrative would be Luca would be the MVP of this league. <laughs> okay, that's that's why. And the only thing you can say is that they're well. I don't know where they're at now. What six, seven, or eight? Wherever they're at, and, they're six. Uh, they're up to six, six now. But they're six. They're up to six. So I think that's the only thing. That's the only reason why I have him there is because of his body is work. Luca has been putting up these type of numbers, which we've come to expect. But the the MVP is the MVP for this season, Scott. Let me hear your yeah. five before we yeah. we. Okay. Yeah. So we can hash it out. But <laughs> interesting. The names are the same, but the order is different for me. Yeah. And here's why. All right. I'm going to start at number five. Giannis would be five for me. Uh, just, you, you know, having another terrific season. His basketball team has been a little up and down. Jason Tatum would be four best player on, best, on the best team thus far this year. Uh, having a terrific year. I'm going to go with him. Number three for me is going to be Luca, And, you know, BJ talked about a premium on winning. And because, and I take the MVP of what's happening this year, and I get what Luca has done historically, and he's having he's putting up some historical numbers again this year. But they're in the sixth place. So that's going to, the deciding factor for me why I have Shea at two. Not only is he one of the leading scorers in the league, He's leading the league in steals. He gives me a little more on that defensive end. And they've been sitting at the top of the Western Conference, you know, first or second for pretty much the entire year. 
So that's why I have Shea too. And I think we're probably all in agreement that uh, the Joker's on his way to his third uh, MVP. And uh, no more, uh, not much more discussion needs to be made. I, I don't have yeah. the Joker at number exactly. one on my list. You don't have the Joker number no. one on your list? Oh, no, okay. I don't. I, 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 I assumed you did it with you trumping in the... Uh, the Nuggets all year long. I I know I'm a. <laughs> I got the joke of a Finals MVP. Don't get me wrong. But you got him as Finals MVP, here's, but not MVP here, of the league. Here's how I see it. I have number five. Okay. I have Luka okay. Doncic because BJ oh, has a priority on winning, but it's put a guy who's losing a bunch of games on the top of his. Even though he's putting up nice stats, cool. Yeah, okay. if you're the eight seed, the seven seed, six seed, you're not really in the MVP conversation, no matter how good your stats are. I know Russell Westbrook won it that one year, but that was a unique circumstance of how he found himself mm -hmm. with that makeshift squad, average a triple double, and that was great to be the six seed and win an MVP. Um, four on my list, I have Giannis. Uh, Giannis has put up great numbers, as you do. However, mm -hmm. before the season, all the talk was, oh, the Bucs are going to be unstoppable because now with Dame space in the floor, Giannis is going to get everything he wants on the inside and da -da 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 -da, and it's just not worked. You know, you've also had the coach that you picked or the coach that they hired to get you to stay in Milwaukee. You got rid of him within a couple months. So, yeah, not off the hook for that. Number three, Jason Tatum, best player on the best team. No more needs to be said. Number two, I got the Joker. And at number one, I've got Shea Gross Alexander. The reason being is they've been the number one seed or like number one or number two seed the entire season long. Mm -hmm. He's been, when you watch them play, he's like the focal point of their offense. Without him, you know, he's, I think he's only missed one game so far, but without him, that team does not move whatsoever. Um, I think as great as his teammates are, um, without him, they're nowhere near, even close to the one seed. And the main reason I have him above the Joker is you could tell the Joker was pretty much just chilling until after the All-Star break. And now he's taking it seriously. And I want to reward the the player that's been going hard the whole season. Um, I think he's going to set a record for the most 30-point games in the season. And I think that that should be rewarded. Whereas the Nuggets, for me, kind of coasted a little bit and then flipped the switch as of late with enough time to make up the, the gap between the one seed. Was it that the Nuggets were coasting or was it that the Nuggets were facing being the defending champs every night they went into an arena and getting hmm. the best effort hmm. from everybody? They, they are still uh, the defending and champs. I just, no, I agree <laughs> with that, but I'm saying it takes, and BJ could speak to this. There's no such thing as coasting. There's no such thing as coasting. There's an adjustment period when you are the defending champions. And now, I don't care if you're playing the last pace team in the league, you are getting an effort like no other every night, you know, thrown at you. Yeah. And I think it takes time to adjust to that and understand that. And then, you know, for guys to say, you know what? No, we. We want to do this again. I, okay. And I, I hear what you're So that's what I'm asking. Yeah, I, I so hear I'm what you're saying. Thing. And the way I look at this perspective is the Celtics, after they won a championship in 2008, they started the next season 27 and 2. The Golden State Warriors, after they won their first championship with Steph Curry, how many games did they go unbeaten the next season to begin the season? I don't think it was until the road trip where they went to see Milwaukee in November where they lost their first game. So it's not that oh, we're the defending champs and everyone's giving us our best shot. Yeah, you're the defending champs. Come out here and play like it. And that's not a knock on them as a team to the point where I doubt their championship winning abilities, but it's just like, okay, cool. We won a championship. We know we're capable of doing it again. We know we're capable of flipping the switch. And you guys say that there's no coasting, but from the way that I've watched them play before the All-Star break to the way you watch them play now, there is a markable difference in that team. I don't know if it's just me that's seeing things, but I can see yeah. it, and the results but, you know, speak again, themselves. And we, I, I will say this too: a, a difference in this team too. No Jeff Green, no Bruce Brown off the bench, and so you were developing your bench early yep. in this year. Yeah, that's valid, you know. So guy, so guy likes guys like Peyton Watson and uh, Braun from Kansas. Uh, you know, you already had um, Reggie Jackson. You know, and yep. those guys. So you know what they can do, but. They were trying to replace those guys too, and I think now they're starting to play a little bit better. Yeah, they're, they're getting they're gaining more confidence too, and I think that's been helpful to to, to the Nuggets' cause. I was thinking about this the other day, Bruce Brown. Um, 
I was reading from someone who was at a Raptors practice that Bruce Brown is now practicing with the G League guys to try and learn the offense that the Raptors are running. And I was right. thinking, this. so this is the same guy that was so crucial in the finals to now he's at a point where he's practicing with the G League guys. And I'm like, <laughs> maybe the Joker does make it. Maybe I can get you 10, 20 points if I got the Joker on my team. But, you know, that's, that's how I was looking at it. So that's why the reason I've got Shea at number one. I think he's more than deserving of MVP this season. Um, although what I do have to say is I'm getting very annoyed with his grifting for fouls. He's encroaching MB territory with this. So that's just something I'll keep an eye on because <laughs> some of the, any time a defender comes near him, the flailing, this is the one that gets me. If you guys are listening to audio, you got to watch on YouTube. Guys, this is the one that gets me. Any time a defender comes near him, he goes like this. Like, come on, man. What, what, what are you doing? What are you? Like, that's starting to really annoy me, but... That, that's who I got number one on my list. I mean, Luka Doncic, as much as you can put the blame on his teammates you, and the roster that's around him, you, it's winning games. Do your stats well, transfer into winning? That's what know, I, it, B, BJ brought up a point, and I didn't mean, and I'm gonna let BJ go. But in terms of guys having done it over no number of years, I do think voters for this award take that into account a little bit. You know, a historical ramp up. So for me, with Shea having an all NBA season last year, knocking at the door this year, mm -hmm. I think coming into next season. Yeah, now you're talking. He's going he he's going to be a guy that could be an odds on favorite to win it, assuming that he plays, you know, close to where he's at now and the Thunder are up in the top 2 or 3 in the Western Conference. Yeah, it's it's interesting because it's a single season award. So yes, it is. But I'm really just saying, but it's but interesting. But you 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 yeah. build up equity in the voters' minds. Yeah. That, okay. This well, I I, I, I the thing with the voters, and this is why I don't really believe in the MVP <laughs> award anymore. The voters are ridiculously bad. So like last season, oh, Joker's not the MVP because he can't play defense and he's never done it in the playoffs. So instead, we're going to give the MVP to a guy who loses in the second round every year. <laughs> like like, come on, what what, what are we doing here? But I don't believe in the MVP, but that's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother conversation. But before we get to the awards end of the season, we've got some basketball left to play. So who are you guys looking in on and watching this week as the NBA rolls on? Well, I tell you what, I'm going to watch two teams because they're locked in the, to, to one another as I see it right now. And those two teams are the Houston Rockets oh, you and, go, my team. <laughs> and, go, and, and Golden State Warriors. They're separated by two games right now from the 10th and 11th slots. And Houston has a favorable schedule coming up this week. They're at home twice to, to the Jazz and Blazers. They got a tough one on the road against uh, OKC and then at the Jazz again. And then you look at Golden State's record and they've been playing up and down win one lose one they they haven't we thought they had found some consistency but it looks like they're leveling off they are at the t wolves at the heat at the magic and at the hornets to me this this week here is going to be highly determinative in terms of who's going to get that last play-in slot I didn't think I'd be saying this a week or two ago. I thought it was pretty clear cut that both the Lakers and Golden State would be in. But now I'm not so sure. Uh, I'm a little nervous if uh, for Warriors Nation right now. Obviously, <laughs> they, they have the wherewithal to do it. But um, it's going to be a, a very tense week uh, if you're sitting up there in, in the Bay Area right now. 